Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to welcome all of you to this really important uh, day and important press conference. The last week of session, you all, <laughs> we're going to make a lot of changes in New York State. Um, no matter the last week or the last hour of the session, we're going to do a lot of great work. Um, so my name is Maritza Silva Farrell. I am the executive director of Align, the Alliance for Agrarian New York. Um, and I am excited to be here with all of you here with this unique coalition of labor unions, community groups, and businesses coming together to support the 21st Century Antitrust Act, the first in the nation legislation set to update century-old antitrust laws and rein in powerful corporations that are driving down wages and stifling competition. By passing this legislation, the New York legislature would reaffirm that the goal of antitrust laws is to prevent the abuse of power by monopolies. Let's remember Amazon, all these big tech companies, and stop anti-competitive practices and keep labor markets open and fair. It would provide workers and small businesses with significant new protections putting New York at the vanguard of the national push to ensure that dominant corporations can't use their power to unfairly drive down wages or block competition from accessing markets. The 21st Century Antitrust Act is the most progressive antitrust legislation in the country. And today we are here together speaking about this. And I'd like to introduce you to our champion in the Senate who has been leading the, the guard in, 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 the, in the Senate right now, Senator Genaris. Thank you, uh, Maritza. And let me thank everyone who has uh, taken time to be on this uh, Zoom uh, and the uh, press as well. Uh, Maritza does great work with the line. We work together on the HERO Act, which we got done earlier this year. And, uh, and now we're together on this important issue. Uh, also, thanks to um, some some folks who are not here, uh, uh, the representatives of Attorney General Tish James' office had uh, a big hand in helping us uh, draft this legislation. Uh, I do see my friend Zephyr Tichat on the call, uh, as well as a number of the speakers you're going to hear from. We're all very, very involved in making this uh, the best it could be. Uh, we have a problem in this country. We have a problem that there is tremendous market power in very, very few hands, and it is being abused to the detriment uh, of the public, certainly, but also of small and medium-sized businesses who can't uh, have any oxygen to breathe and to grow. Uh, so you may hear uh, some concerns from representatives of big tech and of the giant uh, corporations in this country, uh, but let's be very clear. This is a pro-business uh, piece of legislation. This is something that will spur innovation, uh, which is being suffocated right now uh, because small uh, startups, uh, medium-sized businesses don't have the opportunity to grow and innovate because they are just being squashed by the big players who are abusing some of the um, uh, tactics that they uh, have at their disposal in a modern economy. Our antitrust laws are over a century old. Uh, even the ones we have have been diluted by court decisions over the years to the point of uh, ineffectiveness. And what we are proposing here in New York would be a change, not just for our state, but for the entire nation, uh, establishing a standard of abuse of dominance, which is uh, used in much of the rest of the world, uh, would give our regulators uh, real teeth to be able to go and, and fight the fight on behalf of the public to make sure we have uh, a democratic economy. And I mean that with a small d, uh, an economy where uh, there are many voices that are able to compete with one another uh, and uh, hopefully um, lead to a more robust uh, job creation and innovation. Uh, also importantly, and I know Maritza cares a great deal about this, uh, this bill would protect uh, workers and the workforce. Um, it also would deal with uh, the opportunity to enforce against businesses that control too much of the employment market to the point where they, the uh, workers are not um, given their actual uh, power to negotiate uh, and be able to afford themselves of uh, opportunities that competition would provide. And so. Uh, this is a huge step forward today. Uh, I believe that someone in Dinowitz, if he's not already on, may be coming on at some point, uh, but he's doing great work in the assembly. Uh, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll get on it uh, as well before the weekends. And we look forward to uh, moving things in the right direction. So thank you all. 
Thank you, Senator, and thank you for your leadership, um, for doing such an amazing work here. We're gonna make history in New York. I think we are gonna be known as the, the state that it's setting the tone when it comes to antitrust law. So thank you for your leadership. I want to introduce you up next uh, to Sefer Eticha, who is a law professor at the Fordham, Fordham University and has also been leading a lot of conversations on how we need to change these laws in our state. So Sefer. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. This is a, it's this this bill is epic. It's it's a really um, significant step. Uh, we're facing a you know, real uh, monopoly crisis, which is hurting workers and has been hurting small businesses for a long time. But especially um, with the with the double squeeze of the pandemic, the uh, the abuse of big corporate monopolies of both workers and small businesses is truly out of control. And unfortunately, the tools that we have to address that, the um, national and state antitrust laws, have effectively uh, been rewritten by um, judges over the last 40 years who have been heavily influenced by Ronald Reagan's vision of um, corporate concentration. So it's a, this bill um, is a, a a major moment of small businesses, workers, and the state of New York taking back power and giving tools to stop this abusive practice, these abusive practices, and to stop the gross inequality and suffering that is flowing from this. So I think it's really significant that on this press call today, we have labor small businesses and businesses of a you know much of a larger size businesses like yelp who are all saying look we've got a problem and we need some tools to solve it just very briefly there's three um three features i want to uh, call out in this bill that are significant um one is that it um uh by establishing an abuse of dominant standard um which ha allows for the AG, uh, plaintiffs, to show that a firm is dominant, controlling at uh, a much more realistic level than courts have for the past 40 years at 40%, and also allowing other mechanisms of showing dominance. So you don't have what you have now, which is years of litigation that are payday for economists, but actually really harm um, uh, workers and small businesses. Second, it really places labor and the impact, the really disgusting impact of monopoly power on workers at the heart of the, of the law, which is very powerful, absolutely necessary, something that's been part of antitrust law but has not gotten the focus it needs. And third and relatedly, um, uh, really made it clear and easier to bring lawsuits when big businesses are um, abusing their power over small businesses. So I'm thrilled to be here in support of um, Senator Generis's incredible leadership. Thank you, Sefer. I really appreciate your comments. Um, and up next, I'd like to introduce you to Stacy Mitchell for the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Thanks, Maritza, and great to be here. Um, my name is Stacy Mitchell. I'm the co-director of the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. My organization is also a founding member of Small Business Rising, which is a coalition of more than 24 independent business organizations. Uh, that collectively represent about 150,000 independent small businesses across the country, including thousands of, of businesses in New York. Um, this coalition strongly supports the 21st Century Antitrust Act. Uh, you can find uh, statements from various coalition members on the Small Business Rising uh, website. Um, you know, and the reason is very simple. Small businesses have been in steep decline. And when we look at one sector after another, what we see is that the problem is that the, the outsized market power of a handful of dominant companies, they have the ability to undermine competition, to exclude competitors, and, and to abuse small businesses. And we see this with um, uh, independent pharmacies, with farmers, with independent retailers, craft brewers, I mean, all kinds of small independent businesses that are the lifeblood of the state's economy have been harmed and in some cases driven out of business by abusive and anti-competitive practices. And as Professor Teachout outlined, you know, the problem is that because of misguided decisions by federal enforcers over the years and by the courts, 
enforcers can't actually get at these, these practices. They can't get at the, the abusive practices that, that we see. What this legislation does is it creates a new standard, a new set of standards that will ensure that enforcers can get at those abusive practices and that independent businesses have a fair chance to compete, um, which is great news for job creation, for innovation, uh, and for the communities that they serve. Thank you. Thank you, Sefer. Really appreciate your support and all the amazing work that you're doing on supporting and ensuring that businesses, small businesses particularly, are protected in these difficult times that we know during the pandemic they were uh, faced with. Um, up next, I'd like to introduce you to Bernadette Kelly, uh, the trustee uh, from Teamsters Joint Council 16. Thank you, Marissa. You forgot to mention my other hat, which is I also serve on the board of Align very proudly. And thank you for getting us all uh, on this call this morning with Senator Janaris Sartampion and, of course, uh, Professor Teachout. Thank you so much uh, for getting us all to the spot. Um, this is extremely important for workers, uh, especially Teamsters. And industry after industry, we've seen dominant corporations growing, not because they're providing better services, not because they're providing better products but because they're low pay, they make workers work longer and faster and less safely. Teamster members have fought for decades to set a very high standard in the companies they work for, but now these companies feel the pressure to match these bad practices or potentially lose business to them. There's one particular case in point, which is Amazon. Amazon's market share is an existential threat to workers in the logistics industry, whether they're employed by Amazon or not. Amazon has quickly become a dominant employer and has used that position to lower standards for the entire industry. Package delivery used to be a job where everyone can earn a decent living and then spend the weekend with their family. But Amazon pays half the union rate and makes workers deliver on weekends. The pressure is on union companies to do the same. As a dominant purchaser, Amazon is also able to exert extreme pressure on these companies to expand hours and delivery days. Our antitrust laws have been weakened to the point that no longer hold companies like Amazon accountable. The 21st Century Antitrust Act will update these laws to give the attorney general and workers themselves the power to hold bad actors accountable. Importantly, the law sets standards for monopsony, dominance as a purchaser, and specifically dominance in the labor market. When a company is this big and it is non-union, when nobody can hold them accountable and the employer can dictate wages, working conditions unilaterally for its own workers, and those bad conditions trickle down to the rest of the economy, it hurts our industry workers as well. So thank you so much today. This is an exciting, historical, groundbreaking day, and the Teamsters are very proud to be part of it. Thank you, Bernadette. And just a uh, case in point, I'd like to introduce you to Anthony Rosario, who is a member of Teamsters Local A04 and UPA's worker as well. So we can hear from the voices of the workers and how they see the importance of this legislation to become a reality. Anthony. Hi. Oh, man. Thank you so much, Align. Thank you, Senator Janaris and Bernadette Kelly. Hit the nail right on the head. I'm experiencing it. I've ex I'm a 27 year teamster at a local 804. I started as a part timer loading trucks. And even then I could see how Amazon was affecting the business over the years as the as the trucks got heavier and the packages just kept coming the way the conveyor belts move. It's just really ridiculous. Um, it, it, and when you talk about killing businesses, I mean, I used to take my kids to Toys R Us when they were young and they're still little. They're 11 and eight, and they still want to know, dad, are we going to Toys R Us? And I'm like, sorry, kids, you know, Toys R Us hasn't been around for quite some time. And like, how do you explain to kids that because of these big corporations, you know, uh, Toys R Us is obsolete now, you know? Um, we, we call it the Amazon effect. That's what we call it. Uh, it it's, it's, you know, it, it's corporations like Amazon that's destroying the way we work. And, and as Bernadette was saying, the standards have to remain our standard. The teams has always had a great standard. These are drivers are making good money. And for the drivers that Amazon to be making half that price, and it's not even, it's, it doesn't make any sense. They're doing the same thing we do for half the price. I mean, longer hours. I had to miss my kids, uh, my son's karate. Uh, um, he had a karate graduation where, you know, he was about to get that next level, that next belt. 
I couldn't make it. And my son tells me, you know, dad, why couldn't you make it? I'm so I'm sorry, buddy. I had to work. You know, these are things that affect all of us. We have workers that have worked for, for, for UPS over 17, 18 years that are used to having their weekends off. But now they can't have their weekends off because other companies are putting pressure on them to work for the companies to all work weekends. So now these members that have had 17, 18 years of enjoying their family time on the weekend can't even do that anymore because they're being shifted from Tuesday to Saturday or even, mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? And they're also, and, it, and they're so used, it's not like it's, it's just such an abrupt change in life, you know? So these are mm -hmm. all things that are affect us. That's why it's very important that this, when I heard about this bill, I was so excited about it. It's something that has to be pushed now. We can't wait. We can't wait for this to be done. It's been affecting us for such a long time and nobody's put these people in check. Somebody has to put these people in check. So, you know, over the last year, we're all considered essential workers, right? We're all called heroes. But the companies like Amazon, do they really view us workers as heroes? I don't think so. I don't feel like a hero. I don't feel like a hero from UPS, that's for sure. They would undercut the industry standards that we workers have fought generations before us have fought so hard to achieve. So, you know, I'm, I, I appreciate Senator Gennaris and, and the Senate and thank you all the press for listening in. Uh, you know, we, we need to pass this bill. We call on the assembly to pass the bill this week if possible, please. Thank you. We, the workers deserve it. We, the workers need it. And, and to save all the other companies that are just having a tough time. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Anthony, and that's totally right. We're gonna keep pushing and, and making sure that the assembly gets this through as well, because it's the, the most important legislation to be looking at at this point. Uh, just because we're running a little bit out of time, I wanna make sure that we also hear from the other side of the story, businesses, right? We have businesses who also are really concerned about this issue, and we know that this coalition, which I'm gonna name in a moment, the groups that are engaged here, it's very much connected to the benefit for our consumers, for our workers, and for our communities overall. So up next, I have Luther Lowe, the Senior Vice President of Public Policy for Yelp. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Senator Giannaris, for spearheading this important legislation. Um, we have nearly 1,000 employees, uh, Yelp does, in our Manhattan office, and I'm proud to stand with other members of the business community uh, advocating for the passage of this vital legislation. Uh, it's critical for the tech and business industry here in New York. Uh, we need a 21st century antitrust act for the 21st century economy we live in. We witnessed in the past how enforcing antitrust laws can spur innovation, new market entrants, and new options for consumers. And this bill is going to help regulators, businesses, and consumers pr by providing the legal tools they need to fight for a fairer and more level playing field across multiple industries and to hold bad actors accountable. This legislation is crucial in preventing big tech from monopolizing and exploiting consumers on the internet. Specialized services like Yelp and ZocDoc are actively being smothered by Google, which has excessive market power to manipulate search output. Google's business model steers users away from high quality specialized search services and leads consumers to their own review database, which raises numerous problems. The Wall Street Journal found that Google own review database had millions of fake reviews for products and businesses that leave many consumers feeling duped and scammed. Unlike Google, Yelp has taken the problem of misinformation very seriously and has instituted strict quality controls in order to protect consumers. This legislation is crucial to end such exclusionary practices by these dominant firms. Yelp looks forward to working with Assemblymember uh, Dinowitz and his Assembly colleagues uh, to get this bill passed and signed into law. Thank you, Luther. Appreciate your support and thank you for being part of this coalition. Up, up next, I'd like to introduce you, uh, Pat Garofalo, Director of State and Local Policy at the American Economic Liberties Project. Thanks, Maritza, and thanks everyone for being here today. I'm Pat Garofalo, Director of State and Local Policy at the American Economic Liber Liberties Project. There's a long, proud tradition in the U.S. of state governments being at the forefront of challenging corporate power, of ensuring that small businesses and workers have fair access to markets for their products and their labor, and you actually see that across the country today. Elected officials everywhere are looking for ways to take on corporate concentration, but this bill is the most significant and comprehensive effort of them all. With this piece of legislation, New York has 
an opportunity to set a standard for every other state and the federal government in challenging dominant corporations and anyone who looks at the economy today and, and sees what large corporations have done and how they abuse small businesses and workers can't seriously say that the antitrust laws don't need an update. So we're very excited about this bill and we hope it becomes law as soon as possible. Thank you, Pat. Um, and just to move us along a little quicker, I know that Senator Gennari's had to leave pretty soon uh, to, to do the job, right? So I'm going to make sure that we hear from, from Ben Gross, uh, who is the Chief Strat Strategy Office of Genius. Hi, thanks. Uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, I work, at, I work at Genius, which is a music media company. We've been, uh, we're based in Brooklyn. We've got about 100 employees here. Uh, we've been here for about 10 years. Uh, I want to echo everything that, uh, that Anthony and Luther said, and I'll just add that uh, Genius has really experienced the anti-competitive power and the, the abuse of dominance uh, from big tech uh, firsthand. Uh, you, know, you can read, also read about this in the Wall Street Journal. Google has been displaying content that was uh, lifted quite brazenly from Genius for, for years now with total impunity. Uh, and yeah, we think that this legislation goes a long way toward giving us the tools we need to, uh, to, to level the playing field. And that's so important for Genius. It's so important for small businesses all over New York. And uh, we really look forward to seeing it signed into law. And, and thanks, Energy and ours, for leading on this. Thank you, Ben. And thank you for your support. Um, up next, I have Michael King, who is the director of A Strong Economy for All and counsel for the Center for Popular Democracy. Thanks, Maritza. Thanks, Senator Gianaris. Um, very straightforward to wrap up. New York should have the strongest antitrust laws in the country. And this coalition, this campaign, and these lawmakers are going to make it happen. We're updating our laws based on the current reality of dominant monster corporations crushing small businesses and workers. We're setting clear, bright line standards based on the actual facts on the ground that we've all developed together over the past year. And we are setting a mark where President Biden, Attorney General Garland, and state attorney generals all over the country can work together to enforce these rules to ensure fair competition and to make sure that our economy works well for everyone, not just the billionaires and the big corporations. Thank you, Mike, really appreciate you being here. And as you all can see, this is a very large coalition, uh, a unique coalition really, where you have small businesses, uh, you have uh, labor unions, workers, um, and I'm gonna name some of them. We have Joint Council 16 Teamsters, uh, RWDSU, uh, CPD, uh, New York Communities for Change, Make the Road New York. Uh, we have the East for Local Self-Reliance, who you heard of today. Uh, we have American Economic, Economic Liberties Project, um, and uh, we have many more groups who have been engaged here, Yelp, Genius, um, so this is a large coalition and we're gonna continue the fight and we now call on the assembly to ensure that this bill moves forward. I'm gonna open it up to press questions before the Senator has to jump off, uh, but I'm gonna also allow for others to, to jump in if anybody else wants to say anything else about the bill. Any questions from press? Uh, hi, yeah, this is uh, Rebecca Lewis from City and State. Uh, I just wanted to ask the Senator, uh, you introduced this bill last year. Uh, there was a hearing on this bill. I just want to know uh, what, if anything, has changed in this year's iteration of the bill compared to last year's? I, th I think there's a, a great deal of things that have changed because we took uh, what we heard at the hearing and used it to make uh, the bill better. Um, so I think we got more specific about uh, market thresholds, uh, about the protection on the labor side, especially. Um, the abuse of dominance standard was always in there from the beginning. The private right of action was always in there from the beginning, but some of the uh, meat on the bones uh, was fleshed out as a result of the hearing and uh, meetings we had along the way. Hi, this is uh, Leanne Island from Politico. Um, what is, um, I'm hearing that this assembly might not take this up by Thursday, sort of what's the move uh, if that doesn't happen? Um... Well, I think the goal is to work with them to try and get them over the finish line in time. Um, so 
I hesitate to start speculating about it, but this issue is not going away. And so if uh, for some reason the next three days doesn't get us where we want to get, that we have several months before we come back in January to uh, to get them where they need to be. I, I don't want to speak for someone in dinner, which has been working hard. I understand he has a committee meeting, which is um, why we may not see him on the Zoom. Um, so I'll, I'll refer you also to him for more specific um, comments about where the assembly is, but we're going to try and get him there by Thursday. And if for some reason that doesn't happen, we're going to keep working. Thank you. Any other questions for the Senator or for, or for anyone who is on the press conference today? Hey, Senator, this is Ryan Tracy from the Wall Street Journal. Can you can you talk a little bit more about the impact you think this bill would have? I mean, you, you talked about, um, you know, this being a model for other states, but given that this is New York State focused, what kind of impact do you think it would have? I think the impact would be massive. Um, for one thing, um, I believe it would give regulators, like there's no, there's no um, uh, industry or market player, especially the big ones that don't have a footprint in New York. Uh, and so when they are squashing the efforts of Yelp or Genius to do what they need to do, yes, that has a specific New York impact, but it also, if we are successful in combating what they're doing to these folks, they will have to change their approach uh, across the country. Um, and so we, in addition to just setting the tone um, from a policymaking perspective that other states and even the federal government may start moving in this direction, the mere fact that the enforcement within New York can take place under this new standard would have a cascading consequence uh, um, on the national economy. Would anyone like to add anything to this comment? Yeah, Dave Cout here at Capital Forum. Can you give us any sense of as to where uh, you've uh, heard other states are looking at taking something like this up? In other words, who might be- What other states? What other states are looking into this just to help point us in the right direction? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for anyone else. And so if there's not legislation introduced, um, I would yeah. just have to tell you who's, who's asking us about it. But the abuse of dominant standard is in place in much of the rest of the world. This is not uh, 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 an issue of first impression. So I know others are looking at it. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is a little bit outside my area of, of influence or knowledge, but I believe DOJ in their action against Google is exploring how far they can go in this direction, even uh, just through the judicial process under the existing laws. Uh, so it is a, it is a topic of, uh, of great uh, academic debate and we're trying to give it um, uh, some practical import uh, in actually setting policy. Just want to quickly add something that I think is important to elevate. Let's recognize that many large uh, tech companies have been uh, taking a lot of power, you know, and those are the corporations that are lowering down wages and ensuring that they take over the entire markets. We're seeing it every day with Amazon here in New York State, in New York City. It just by this past year, we've seen the expansion of this corporation here in New York. As Anthony and Bernadette mentioned, the wages for workers in those industries is, are really low, right? So passing this kind of legislation Let's make sure that we're clear that we are ensuring that we are elevating the protection for workers, as well as ensuring that we have the ability to expand different kinds of businesses and allowing for businesses to thrive. And if there is a time to do it, the time is now. Hi, this is uh, this is Max Fillion with MLEX. Um, do you anticipate that the uh, pre-merger notification requirements as well as um, some of the other uh, uh, measures that would be uh, introduced in this law? Do you expect that it's going to take up more resources um, for the Attorney General's office? And is there a plan to uh, boost funding to match with the uh, increased uh, need? Yeah, it's hard to imagine that it won't require more resources, but the Attorney General has been very involved in um, drafting this legislation. So they believe it's something they can handle. Um, and 
as we always do every year, we enact a state budget. If there needs to be adjustments, I think we're prepared to make the necessary one. Any other questions? And Senator Gennaris, thank you so much for uh, making time for us here. I know that you're pretty busy, so let's make sure that we get all the questions out before you have to hop off. Um, thank you for that, Maritza. Thank you, everyone. And I have to go to actually pass the bill, which is why we're here, right? So yeah. <laughs> so I'll, <laughs> make I'll it happen. You thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the press? Hey, hey, hey! Actually, can I can I jump in again? This is Ryan from the Wall Street Journal. Can you guys speak to you know the business community folks uh, who are opposed to this bill? Have been talking about just you know, in their view, it would impact sort of small businesses and local markets potentially. Can you talk about how you view the impact on small business and what your response would be to the concerns that you know this wouldn't just be <clears throat> a bill that could be used against Amazon? I'm gonna let Luther. Oh, ben to jump on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. I mean, I think that the the senator's office has been really thoughtful about ensuring that this uh, that the tools that the attorney's general office are provided are uh, contoured in a way where this is uh, designed to go after the largest companies. I mean, we let's let's be honest. We wouldn't be having this conversation if if it weren't for uh, four or five companies whose uh, market caps exceed six hundred billion dollars. Uh, Begin, and, it, and it's not just that they're, uh, you know, uh, achieving dominance. It's that they're extending that dominance illegally into adjacent markets, and that's where the problem arises. And so, uh, on the contrast, you know, I think uh, many of the uh, organizations that purport to represent, uh, you know, the tech community at large or, or uh, business communities at large, uh, you know, in fact, if you look under the hood at who is uh, funding these organizations, it's uh, just uh, two or three companies, usually Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, um, and I think you know they're they're going to run around like the the sky is falling, uh, suggesting that you know uh, innovators are going to be sued out of existence. Uh, but the re reality is is that this is going to actually unlock a tremendous amount of innovation. I would you know the the history lesson of U.S. versus Microsoft is really important here. Uh, in 1998, uh, the before U.S. versus Google, uh, the, which was filed last fall, it, it was two decades, over two decades prior to that, uh, DOJ brings U.S. versus Google, and six months later, uh, uh, I'm sorry, G DOJ brought uh, U.S. versus Microsoft, and six months later, Google is, is uh, born in a garage. And so there's no coincidence that uh, not long after uh, the government stepped in and said, hey, Microsoft, you can't go around squashing all these little uh, companies and, and entering all these adjacent industries um, that a certain uh, a search company with a novel idea was allowed to uh, to be born without fear that uh, Microsoft could use its dominance of Internet Explorer, which had 90 percent market share at the time to uh, to throttle them. There's no question that absent U.S. versus Microsoft, uh, that Google would have been strangled in the crib. So the reality is that this is going to actually oxygenate the markets and create a lot more opportunities for, for startups and small businesses in New York. I mean, I'll only add just that, yeah, you know, Yelp's a pretty big company. Genius is a small business in New York and, uh, and we are, you know, being affected uh, in a big way by, you know, big tech and Google specifically is, you know, and a competitive use of their market power. And it's just, uh, yeah, the, the, it, is, it is an existential threat to companies like Genius. Uh, and, you know, that, that's, that's certainly our experience. I also want to elevate that, um, you know, folks have done studies on this, and in 2019, uh, there was a survey uh, that find out that about 66% of independent businesses express a strong support for uh, um, antitrust enforcement. Um, and, you know, many of the independent re retailers uh, have ranked Amazon's dominance as a major threat 
to their survival. And we're hearing constantly how many businesses are feeling threatened by Amazon's power. So that by itself, it tells you that obviously this kind of uh, corporations are taking too much uh, for themselves rather than allowing businesses to thrive. Mike, do you wanna jump in here uh, also? Yeah, sure. I mean, Brian, I think you can make an analogy with the Martin Act. I mean, New York has very strong laws that set rules and encourage fair dealing and block abuse. Wall Street has thrived under the Martin Act. It's a tough law, but it requires uh, companies to behave properly in a way that the entire market can operate fairly. So I think business across New York, small and big, will thrive with better rules against destructive and competitive practices. Hi, can I ask a question? Um, I'm Lauren Gurley, I'm from Vice. Uh, I was wondering, so I've read, um, I'm sorry if, if um, maybe there's more out there than this, but I've read that I'm a labor reporter. I've read that the bill would sort of effectively stop the use of non-compete and no, no poach clauses. And I'm wondering in addition to that, are there any other specific um, parts like policy measures in there that um, you know, are worth noting in terms of how it would, it would uh, help workers? Would anyone from labor would like to step in here? Sure. Um, so just on the, this is Marka Peterson. Um, so just on the, um, in terms of what the bill does, uh, it um, would uh, allow for, um, if there are non-compete agreements or the power on the part of employers to unilaterally set wages, this can be used as evidence that the company is a dominant company. Um, and then uh, if a company is shown to be dominant, uh, then um, th the company is prohibited from imposing non-compete restrictions or other restrictions on workers competing uh, for jobs. Uh, also would pr prohibit those dominant companies from restricting workers from discussing wages and work working conditions, so no non-disclosure agreements. Um, and then anything else uh, that you could show would be an abuse of dominance. So, you know, sort of a catch all. Thank you, Marka. Uh, does anyone else in, from the press have any questions? There is a press release that should be coming into your inbox uh, with some more uh, statements from members of the coalition. Uh, if, if, if there is anything else that you may need. Um, any other comments or questions from the folks on the call? Okay, well, we're gonna keep up. We're gonna keep on getting the assembly um, on the same board <laughs> and let's celebrate later today for the passage of the bill in the Senate. This is a significant moment for all of us. And I wanna thank uh, to everybody here and to all the members of the coalition for uh, putting so much effort on ensuring that this legislation gets through the Senate today. This is a work of the coalition, is a work of our community groups, our labor unions, our uh, businesses who really are fighting to ensure that we have a uh, fair uh, state in New York. Thank you all for joining. Um, if there are any follow-ups, I know that Alex Moore and Alex Marion um, and Virgil, as well, Patrick from Align will be able to answer any other press questions if those come up. Thank you so much, you all. <laughs>